Okay, so first things first, I'm going to talk about the saddles we use. We have lots of different exercise saddles, but I usually use one of two saddles. This thicker one is called the maxi pad saddle. We call it that just because it's thicker than the rest of the saddles and more padded. It's comfier if you're sitting in it lots, so good for riding babies or horses who prop or wheel because if you need to sit back, there's more saddle there. And then the other saddle that I use is this brown one, and I like it just because it's comfy, it's at my stirrup length, so it's just typically what I grab since it's already set for me to ride in. These exercise saddles aren't as small as the jockey saddles, but they're still very, very light and low profile. They probably weigh under 5 pounds, but I'm not very good at guessing weights, but they're very light. So for saddle pads, we use western saddle pads mainly. We do have some back on track saddle pads that we'll use underneath another saddle pad. This black western pad is my favorite because I like the shape of it and it's easy to put on, but we have lots of different options if there's more than one person riding, but I try to grab the black one always. This faux sheepskin pad we use on horses who are more sensitive or have sore backs and we'll use it with another pad underneath of it, usually one of the thin back on track ones. Um, and I don't really like this one because it slides around a lot until you get the girth done up because it's not super shaped or heavy. So it's annoying to put on, but we use it on specific horses, so certain horses have to have this pad on them if they're more sensitive. This is where the girth channels and fuzzies hang, and then the thing with the holes in it is a shim, and that stops the saddle from sliding, so we use this on horses who are slab-sided and have a tendency to have the saddle slip more. This is where we hang the nosebands and the shadow rolls. None of the horses this year wore a noseband, they all go without and they just wear their halter underneath the bridle, but we have lots of different options if a horse needs a specific style of noseband or a shadow roll for some reason. We have tons of different bridles and you'll notice that none of them have a noseband on and then we also have lots of martingales and you clip the bib onto the martingale. We leave the bibs attached to the racing lines of the bridle. The rest are kind of just around just in case we need to do a bit change or swap a horse out because of the size of their head or anything. So these are all just set up so that they're ready to go if we need to swap a bit out or do anything like that. But I typically only use one or two of these bridles. We use the D-rings and egg butt bits typically for younger horses who are still learning or horses with super, super soft mouths and we have rubber options just in case. This black one is a rubber ring bit. A lot of people think ring bits look harsh because of the ring hanging down, but it virtually does nothing other than help keep the tongue under the bit and it also helps a bit with steering. This rubber bit I haven't used at all this year, but we had a really sensitive horse that I used on last year. And then the bit underneath of this is just a leather mouthpiece, which I have also never used, but it just shows how diverse our tack room is. This is one of the bibs that we clip onto the martingale. We use bibs because it makes it harder for the reins to come over the neck in the event that a rider falls off and it also keeps the reins from separating as much as they can with the martingale pieces that are separate and not attached with the bib. This is called a tri-bit. It's essentially the same idea as a typical ring bit but I find that the horses like this one better than the ring bit and they go better in it. So this is the bit that I use the most. This is what a regular ring bit looks like. I use this sometimes when the tri bit isn't available, but otherwise I try to use the tri bit instead of this because horses seem to go better in it. But this is essentially the same idea. The mouthpiece is just very slightly different. And on the horse, the ring of the ring bit slides freely. You can move it back and forth really easily. It doesn't stay in a fixed position, it doesn't press down on the tongue, it's easy to move up and down, but it does make it harder for them to get the tongue over the bit if they're being fussy. The racing lines are quite long, so we always tie them in a knot once we're on the horse. The rubber parts are the parts where we hold on to, and they're super grippy so they don't slide out of your hands. And then this is just another look at the bib and what it looks like. You can see the clip, and that clips to the front ring of the martingale. This is a Waterford and there's only one horse in the barn that we use this on and that's because she has the tendency to throw her head or get nervous when cars come by and then she bites down on her tongue or if she's in a bit that's not broken like this, it has a tendency to be more likely to poke the top of her mouth. So this is a bit that we've had good luck on getting her in and getting her going comfortably in. This is a typical snaffle that we use on the young horses or for breaking horses. It's just a regular copper mouth D-ring snaffle. 
Um, most of the horses in the barn could go in this, but since there's some that go a lot better in the tribit, I typically just swap this out with that, even if they could go well in this, because they don't really care. This is where we hang all of our girths and a lot of our blinkers. We use double elastic fuzzy girths. We have a lot of different types of blinkers, but most of our horses in the barn go without blinkers. There's only a couple who actually do wear them. These red ones are the ones that we most commonly use. They're called French blinkers. We do have a smaller kind that are called cheater blinkers, but they got taken to the track so we don't have them at the barn. But we'd use those for horses who spook at their rider so that they can't see the rider but they can see everything else. French block their viewpoint a little bit more than the cheaters do, but they have the diamond that they can also see out of on the side. We call this the Batman mask. It's a titanium face mask which is supposed to help calm the horse, but there's no blinkers or anything on it so they can still see normally. And then the ears are separate from this, but they're just attached because the horse that wears them wears both. And they're just fuzzy ears that muffle some of the sound because the horses who wear them are scared of the traffic and our track is really close to a super busy road. These pink blinkers have been cut down so they're more similar to what a cheater blinker would look like since they're shorter. Just to touch quickly on why we use blinkers, I just wanted to say that we never put them on for no reason. We always try to get the horses to go out without them first. But at the end of the day, if the horse isn't happy or comfortable going around the track and they're always nervous and blinkers will help with this, then they can be a useful tool. Just to make a remark on the horses from the last year, a lot of our horses who were wearing blinkers last year no longer need them this year, so it's not like it's something we constantly use. If we can take them off, we will. We always try to do the least amount of equipment as possible, but at the end of the day, we need to think of the safety of the rider and the horse. A lot of those of you with off-the-track thoroughbreds probably have a horse who might have at least ran in blinkers, but at the end of the day, they're still nice horses. It's not like they have any big problems because they wear blinkers. It's just something that might help a horse focus more or might help with anxiety. If horses are really easily distracted, blinkers can be super useful in getting them to focus. And then once they have their eyes on their job, you can pull them off and have a more agreeable horse. Okay, so for tacking racehorses, it's basically the exact same thing as tacking a riding horse. However, the main thing we do differently is we always put the bridle on first because the bib is attached to the martingale and you need the martingale on first before you saddle. So we always bridle them first and then we bring them around and tie them to the wall before we start saddling. We always use saddle cloths underneath of the saddle pads because the saddle pads aren't easy to wash and the saddle cloths are so we want the sweat to get on the saddle cloth and then we can easily wash those and not have to worry about washing the saddle pads anywhere near as much as we'd need to otherwise. I do up the girth snug enough that the saddle won't slip while I'm getting on but then I finish doing it up once I'm on the horse already and heading down to the track. You'll also notice that my right stirrup is flipped over the saddle. This is easier than running it up because I can flip it over onto the correct side right before getting on, then pull down my left stirrup. This means that I don't have to get on with one stirrup rolled up or run over onto the other side before getting on. It's much more efficient, and the stirrups should always be up when leading the horse in and out of stall so that they don't hook on anything. To get on we get legged up in the alleyways and then I ride out of the barn onto the path down to the track. This is just me tacking another horse so you can get a closer idea of what the saddle cloth looks like and the saddling process. She's pretty chunky and I did up the saddle too tight on one side so I had to go back over and loosen it before doing it up again. With the racehorses we try not to do them up a ton all at once because they're not really used to that and they're used to getting it tightened as they walk. And now we're ready to head down to the track. This is just me tightening the girth as we walk down to the track. We tighten it on both sides and just make sure it's nice and snug before heading out because it would really suck if your saddle slipped while you were galloping. It's always important to double check your girth in case your horse bloated, but in the event that the girth is loose when you're already out warming up on the track, I have learned how to tighten up the girth at the trot and a lot of exercise riders do this. We can also adjust our stirrup at the trot and this is just a valuable skill that this job has taught me.
Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you guys found this interesting and educational. As always, please like and subscribe if you liked my content, and let me know what you think. If you have any video requests, please don't be shy to let me know.